Hi, I'm Jeff Baxter, and I'm going to be showing you a launch range safety demonstration here inside of SDK. The scenario is going to cover multiple aspects of a launch range operator that might be interested in planning for a upcoming launch. And so we're going to be looking at things like the communication links to different ground stations. We're going to look at uh, satellite links. We're going to look at potentially a launch anomaly happening and how you would calculate how close you are to a boundary. We'll be looking at GPS accuracy, and then finally, launch window analysis, looking for other satellites that may be in the way. So the first thing we're going to do is describe the scenario a little bit. We have a launch out of the Cape, and we're going to be looking at these individual ground stations, at least initially, while the launch vehicle is close to the, the launch pad. So if we zoom in, you can see the launch vehicle we have modeled here. We've got a couple of antenna gain patterns shown on each side of the launch vehicle, and you can get a perspective to each of the radar stations that are tracking this particular launch. So the first thing that we want to look at is the line of sight access and range and angles to this particular launch vehicle. And we're going to look at first looking at line of sight only. We'll get into more advanced communications calculations next. But kind of basic and fundamental to SDK is the ability to calculate when one object has line of sight to another object. So we are going to be using this automation interface here at the bottom. It's an HTML interface that drives SDK through its programming interface. Um, and this is going to help us walk through the demo a little quicker. So the first graph that we're showing here is each of those tracking stations to the launch vehicle. And when you look at line of sight only, it looks like you've got good link pretty much for the entire duration here. And the next report, we look at the tracking stations. This is the number of tracking stations that can see the launch vehicle at any given time from 0 to 5. And again, we've got most tracking stations able to track this the entire time. And the last part is the report that tells us the specific durations when we have line of sight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to extend that into a more of a high fidelity communications analysis. So we've got our antennas on the, on the launch vehicle created. We've got antennas on the tracking stations. And so now we can start setting constraints on our system, making it more realistic and getting more accurate representations of what our uh, tracking times would actually be. So in this example, we're looking at each of the uh, ground stations, the tracking stations to the receivers. And you can see that we don't have full access at each time. There's many factors that go into this now, the orientation of the vehicle, the gain pattern of the antennas, and all of that is impacting and driving these calculations. And we're only displaying the times when the received isotropic power is uh, greater than negative 60 dB. So you can see all those here. If you created that same report that shows you how many tracking stations can track the vehicle, you can create that here. And again, you can make the report showing the summary of the, the access times. And you can do the same thing at different thresholds. So you can do that at negative 70. And we'll go ahead and jump ahead and uh, go to the negative 80. And you can look at what your graphs look like in each of these scenarios. Uh, the other thing to notice is we also have multiple receivers. We have receiver 1 and receiver 2 that have different intervals. So that's how you can do some, some pretty basic communications analysis from the uh, launch vehicle to each of the ground stations. You can also look at this from a space-based tracking perspective. So one of the things we're going to look at now is the line of sight to TDRS. So here we've added a couple TDRS satellites in this scenario, and you can see the yellow lines indicating line of sight to the launch vehicle. And similarly, you can then create those same graphs of when do we have a certain communication strength that we are maintaining. So in this case, minimum received isotropic power of negative 160. You can also look at uh, EBNO as another uh, uh, metric of interest. And you can, again, report out the times when you have a good communications link to those TDRA satellites. Another thing that comes up that you might want to be uh, tracking is interference with other LEO satellites. So in this case, what we're doing is we're bringing in a constellation of low Earth orbiting satellites, and we're looking at the communications interference to our TDRA satellites. So in this case, you can see we're trying to communicate for, with our launch vehicle through TDRS-10. 
uh, we see that there is a couple satellites. The red satellite is the one that is interfering most with our launch vehicle communications, and you can see some of the other vehicles as well. And you can get more detailed and dig into the reports and look at different metrics like jamming to signal ratio um, and uh, interference with, uh, with jamming and uh, all of the parameters like EBNO and uh, carry to noise ratio, including jamming. Um, so another, even taking that a step further is you can look at that same communications link quality over an entire geographic region. So in this case, we're looking at our TDRS coverage, but we're looking at it for this entire area. And so what we can do is we can grid up this region, we can calculate at different altitudes, what our communication strength is, and then color code where the gaps in coverage are and identify those as areas of red or yellow for warning areas. So those are a couple of things you can do to look at the communications strength and tracking of the launch vehicle throughout its flight. And, uh, and then you can get into a little bit more complex situations where perhaps there's a, a launch anomaly. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and just show uh, the launch vehicle. We're gonna show, talk about a little bit what the geometry looks like as it's changing. You'll notice we're using a camera path in this example that allows you to define a view path around the vehicle. Um, and you can look at uh, different perspectives. You can look at different vectors to the different objects. In this case, we've got a vector to Ascension Island. We've got another vector back to the ground stations. You can view the different stage separations throughout the, uh, throughout the launch, and you can move forward and backwards in time. So if we wanted to look at a potential launch anomaly, what we're gonna show here is different destruct zones. And that's what this large region in white here is showing. This is showing you if there's an anomaly and it goes off the main trajectory, when you would have to potentially abort the launch or, uh, or, or uh, cancel the launch or just send a destruct code to actually uh, blow up the vehicle. So here we're gonna look at a trajectory, a notional trajectory that went off course for some reason. And what you can see here is you can calculate within SDK how close you're getting to this boundary at any particular time. And you can do that to individual points that you want to investigate, or you can do it to an entire volume or area surrounding that. So in this case, we've got a volume defined as the border boundary wall here and we're calculating how close our errant launch vehicle is to that boundary, and we're color coding that from red to yellow to green. So green means we're, we're fine, we're not close to, um, to impact or getting out of our zone, and then red meaning that we are in that zone. So here you can see as you animate it, you can see that you get to that zone eventually, and you would have to then abort the launch. So those are some things you can do when there's an errant launch and you can do some simulation and calculations around that. Go ahead and turn our volumetric object off. And we're gonna explore a couple other things now for our launch range safety example. The next thing we're gonna look at is GPS accuracy. So one of the nice things about using SDK is it is a multi-domain environment. You can have your ground-based assets, your launch vehicle, your satellites, your ships, um, and it's very easy to add other things if you want to look at other types of analysis. So in this case, what we're, what we're going to do is load in the GPS constellation. And to do that, it's just a single click of the button. It will load all the GPS satellites with all of the appropriate orbit, per, uh, orbit position information for the scenario time frame that you've specified. And then you can perform analysis on those satellites. So if we zoom out, we can see all of the GPS satellites here color-coded in our scenario. And now we can perform analysis from our launch vehicle to our GPS constellation. So the way that we're gonna do that is using the coverage tool inside of SDK. This is the single object coverage tool. It's actually one of the lesser known features inside of SDK because it is attached, instead of looking at a region, it allows you to look at an object's route and then perform calculations along that route as opposed to over a region. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our GPS constellation as our assets in our calculation, and then we're gonna compute coverage to our launch vehicle. Once we've computed that, we can define our figure of merit for what we want to look at. 
And in this case, we'll go ahead and look at, nav at navigation accuracy. And we'll look at the overall, let's look at the, the position accuracy. And we'll look at it on a 30 second interval here. So when you do that, you can create a report of those values, or in this case, I'm gonna create a graph, and this shows you what your GPS coverage is throughout the entire trajectory. And then you can color code your route and you can do a lot of different things based on that. So that's how you do object coverage for GPS navigation accuracy, lots of other types of use cases for launch range safety within the object coverage tool as well. So the last thing we're gonna look at real quick is launch window analysis. So if there's other satellites that are potentially coming close to our launch vehicle, um, we want to know about that. So to calculate that, if you right click on your launch vehicle, you can actually bring up a close approach tool. So the close approach tool will tell you when you get close to another object. So in this case, we're gonna look at our entire launch time period, and we're gonna look at our uh, uh, different uh, uh, two-line two element sets, different satellites in the satellite catalog. In this case, we're looking at all TLEs. You can choose different databases of satellites, and you can also choose to update these um, based on the current catalog. In this case, I'm going to remove that specific uh, filter because this is an archived example. And we will look at adding those, what, if there are conjuncting satellites into this scenario, in this scenario, we're going to add them into our scenario for additional analysis. And we'll go ahead and open up the constraint tolerance here to show us a max range of 50 kilometers. So let me go ahead and compute this. And STK is going to look at that whole catalog of satellites. It's going to compute the launch trajectory. And it's going to tell us if there's any satellites that are going to be close to our launch vehicle throughout our launch. And what you can see here is it looked at over 13,000 satellites um, after the different filters were uh, applied. And there was two satellites that were within our conditions of 50 kilometers. So what we can do now is we can then, uh, you can see that they're loaded into our uh, scenario already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a report that is going to tell me exactly when those intervals occur. So on our launch vehicle, uh, we can create a close approach report. So here we can see the two satellites identified Cosmos 2523 and 2251 debris. You can see the, the start and stop times of each of these and the minimum range. So this first one appears to be uh, potentially of a concern because this is only 14 kilometers away from my launch vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to that time when that uh, close approach window occurs and I'm going to view that result in my 3D graphics window and I'm gonna zoom in on my launch vehicle and kind of get a sense of how close this comes in the orbit geometry. So here I can see the, the Cosmos satellite coming close to our other satellite. Uh, it's a little hard to see here, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of the route so it's a little bit easier to see. I'll go ahead and make this white and a little bit thicker. And what we'll do is we'll just start animating and we'll see as the, uh, the other satellite comes close to our launch vehicle, uh, we may need to notify the satellite operator before moving ahead with the launch, or we may need to move the launch. In this case, you can see it came pretty close. So if we were slightly off on our launch timing or uh, anything wrong with the vehicle itself, that could potentially be a, uh, a disaster for this near satellite. So those are a few different types of analyses that you can perform related to launch range safety within SDK. We covered those pretty quickly, um, but there's lots of information on our website and training tutorials that will teach you how to use each of these features inside of SDK. So if you have any questions, please let us know. You can view our online documentation at help.agi.com or you can email us at support.agi.com and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching the video.